I'm not a professional photographer. I dabble, but I think my brother is a pretty good one. So I wanted to ask him a few questions about his new Fuji X-T4 and get a little bit of perspective. I hope you enjoy this interview and quick review of the X-T4 from a photographer's perspective. And then we'll jump into some of my thoughts afterwards from a video perspective. Here we go. Since we're talking about the Fuji X-T4, what are three of your favorite features as a photographer? One, I love the manual controls. Uh, I didn't grow up shooting film photography, so that's almost surprising that that, that that would work for me so well. A lot of people that love the manual controls, because you know, you've got a shutter speed dial, you've got an ISO dial, you've got a exposure comp uh, dial, you've got the aperture ring, and you, you tell the camera what you want it to do. You don't, you, you can, you know, there's certainly auto functions, and, and there are times there are great features. You can say, oh, I, I, I want the camera to select like the shutter speed for me. But I love that as I choose in the moment that I want whatever shutter speed or whatever aperture size, I can choose that. And so that, that manual interface really works well for me. One feature that is really, really nice, I know a lot of people have experience with it, but I really like is the tilt screen. You can hold a camera out to your side or above your head or down at the ground and see that screen. And those are great. And I also like that it gives you another way of interacting with the, when you're taking pictures of people, um, it gives you another way of interacting with them. And, and then, uh, you know, another feature that I really love is the speed of the autofocus. I've shot with a lot of different cameras over the years. And, you know, I, I don't know what the fastest camera is in the world right now or anything like that. To me as a photographer with that autofocus, when I've shot a lot of cameras that you're like, man, I wish that had been a little bit quicker. And I've taken a lot of shots with this, you know, relatively new to me, and I've already taken a lot of shots where I'm like, I would have missed that shot with a slower autofocus. Because what is, was the camera you were coming from? Uh, I came from an XE2. And an XE2, um, you know, you got a lot of the same, you got, it's an interchangeable lens camera, it uses the same lenses that I was using. The lenses don't feel like the same lenses because of how much quicker it just, it brings out something different in pictures that, that the XE2 just didn't have built into it anyway. The autofocus is so much faster that lenses that seemed like, oh yeah, you know, they seem pretty good. I'm like, oh wow, I didn't realize they could be this fast. But the resolution just, it, it just makes a clean picture. And uh, you know, it's a, you can tell the technology on the sensor is just better. I mean, it, to, me, in my, to my eyes, it is a more beautiful picture that it's creating. So the autofocus, you have no issues with on this camera for photography? No, I, 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 I couldn't ask it. If it could be faster, I don't know what I would do with it. Now, what do you enjoy about photography? You know, I, I like trying to capture kind of the world as I see it, or at least sometimes imagine it. And, and I like, sometimes I just like the solitariness of it. You go into a party or an event or something and taking pictures, a lot of times people kind of just let you be and you can kind of enjoy it as a spectator and you can, and they know, hey, well, he's taking pictures, I'm not gonna go bother him. And sometimes, you know, it, it probably sounds a little antisocial, but but it's just another way of enjoying an yeah. event or people. What are some of your favorite photographers? Um, you know, probably everybody, or a lot of people say Ansel Adams, I'll, I'll say Ansel Adams. You know, I have a lot of reasons why I really respect him as a, as a photographer. You know, everybody goes, you know, everybody's been to the art store and seen beautiful pictures by him. And sometimes it's understanding the devotion that it took him to go sit for hours or a day or come back multiple days to get that shot he was looking for. Um, another one, and I kind of, like I, I'll say, I probably butcher the guy's name, but it, I think it's Henri Cartier-Bresson. He was a street photographer. And, you know, in, in the photography world, he's very famous and, and he should be. I mean, that's the thing is that he's not, he's not famous for no reason. It's, you know, like he took very creative, very, uh, interesting pictures. His composition was amazing. Um, and then another one is uh, Vivian Mayer. And the interesting thing about, you know, I don't know how many people know about her. I know, you know, she is in more, re you know, in recent years, she's more famous, but she did her entire body of work without anybody ever knowing who she was or even knowing she was taking pictures. And she'd walk around town taking pictures, street photos. She, she really took advantage of, she would take pictures with a Roloflex, so you're looking down and that disconnection, and then also, and would also draw people in for pictures. So those are three of my favorites. Yeah. Is there any place people can find your work? 
No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should put it out there. Yeah, I might. You know, it's a good idea. I should. I, I haven't. I've put a couple on Facebook and things like that, but I, you know, I've got an Instagram account that's pretty much been used to follow a handful of people. <laughs> and yeah, I should throw a couple pictures on it, start throwing some pictures on there. While his perspective is for the photos, I'm going to jump into looking into the video settings. Filming an all eye H.264 10 bit 4K on an APS C sensor has a lot of very tempting things covered. The X-T4 even has a six and a half stop IBIS and a healthy set of lenses for the camera body. But wow, the adapters for the EF to X mount are expensive. I filmed my brother in the interview using the Panasonic S5 and 4K 10 bit 422 H.264 long GOP and film myself and his XT4 using 4K 10 bit 422 H265 all eye. I was using the 85 mm Rokinon Cine lens while the XT4 was using a native 35 mm. The Fuji XT4 sensor has a dimension of 23.5 by 15.6 mm while the Blackmagic 6K Pro, which I'm shooting on today, has a sensor size of 23.10 times 12.99. What are some of the positives for video? Having these options in a largely photographic centric, photo centric camera is impressive. I already mentioned a few of the options, but let's explore a few more in detail. You can record up to 240 frames per second at 1080p. It has a tally light option. Come on, Panasonic, add this to your next software upgrade for the S5. We have the light, but I love using tally lights to remove any doubt in recording. The X-T4 has all eye if you want to avoid long GOP and have much bigger file size and use the more expensive SD cards to record on. All joking aside, all eye is great if you want to use the extra detail and no loss, but I still mostly shoot long GOP in the S5 with no issues or regrets. And if I want all the frames, I'll just add the Blackmagic Video Assistant film in VRAW. The X-T4 has log profile to help capture more dynamic range, F-Log, which I'll share how to grade in DaVinci Resolve shortly. The articulating screen is great, but I'm usually plugged into a 4K monitor anyway, so that's okay. And it has H.265, which provides about 50% of the file size with no loss. Quick note about H.264 versus H.265. This will be a quick rabbit trail. It's just a better compression ratio, but there are a few small considerations. You might select H.264 if you don't have the expensive SD cards to handle the high bit rates. You also might select H.264 if you have a slower computer that would wrestle with the more complex decompression task of H.265, but I'm guessing that's pretty rare these days. So I would always use H.265 whenever I could. The X-T4 won't let you select H.264 if you are trying to film in 422 10-bit because they need the right speeds to match the SD card slot, which it can film in both slots simultaneously as a backup, by the way. Does the X-T4 have any negatives for filming in video? It sounds like it checked all the boxes. But yeah, I had a few complaints. For one, you're stuck with SD cards. If you ever want to shoot an all-eye, then you have to buy the expensive cards. SSD drives are so much cheaper and work with any of my Blackmagic 6K Pro or Video Assist when I'm pushing any high data rate. I personally don't have any native lenses for X mount and the adapters for EF to X are insanely expensive, as shared earlier. There is no built-in headphone jack, but that's probably okay for most of us since they provide a USB-C to headphone jack adapter. This prevents you from charging and listening at the same time, but that's probably okay because the battery is pretty hefty. The HDMI port is a micro HDMI port, which is the same as my S5, but full-size ports are always preferred. The Panasonic GH5 II has a full-size HDMI port, which is the preferred camera for a true comparison because of the similar sensor size, options, and price. But I don't have one, so my comparison is to my current tools, which is the S5 and the 6K Pro. It was easy to color grade the F-Log footage in DaVinci Resolve, but it did take some unexpected added steps along the way. I found the F-Log to Rec. 709 LUT on Fuji's site, see the link in the description. For installing it in DaVinci Resolve, you're just a few quick steps away. Select Project Settings, Color Management, open your LUT folder, drop in your new LUTs, Select Update List, then Save, close Project Settings and go back to your Color tab and find the LUT installed. Now you can easily double click the LUT on your node and you're good to go.
I watched another video explaining an interesting mode, setting up nodes using color space transform and aces, and I thought it was similar enough just using the LUT for this project. The link for that video is also in the description below if you want to walk through Tony Day's tutorial. If you use aces, that might be your answer, but you can use the LUT from Fuji to help shortcut as well. I really like the viewfinder even though I don't typically use them, and although there is no headphone jack native on the body, the USB-C to headphone adapter worked just fine. It shoots 15 frames per second with the mechanical shutter in continuous mode for you professional photographers, and is a beautiful camera. It is a great size with a hefty processor cranking out 400 megabytes per second, H.265 all eye video. But for the same price with comparable options for video, I think I would probably still pick up the GH5 II or GH6 if I was going to choose a camera for primarily shooting video. I love the silver version of this camera as well. I looked at the black version and so did my brother and we just didn't like it as much. The silver feels like such a higher quality camera. I hope you enjoyed the review and the extra perspective from a photographer with the X-T4. Please leave any comments below in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe. It is Halloween after all. Time to play a game.